blessed Sunday. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So this morning, throughout our service, as you hear me say, He is risen, I hope that you at your house or wherever you're watching from will go, He is risen indeed. Because it is true. God bless. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Alleluia. I'd like to thank, on behalf of Worship Without Walls, all of you for being true, faithful to us and joining us here for our Easter dawn service. I'd like to thank you if you tuned in on Friday or on Thursday for our services at night as well and for your continued support to the ministry. With that said, let us pray. Living God, long ago faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world was changed forever. Teach us to keep faith with them, that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, and our faith as true. Amen. I turn into our red hymnal, the 322, the cross, tree of life. God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself. For me. Please join us in our opening hymn. All glory, Lord, and honor. Christ is risen indeed. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn now in our blue hymnal to 640, Christ's death. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him on their, with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him with, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Let us turn now in our Bibles to Psalm 118. Verse 1 through 2 and 14 through 24. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and song, and He has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteousness shall enter. I will praise you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Here ends our reading from the book of Psalms. Our next hymn for worship is Hosanna. Mm -hmm. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up 
your name with hearts full of praise be exalted O Lord my God Hosanna in the highest glory 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 to the King of Kings and glory 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 to the King of Kings. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God. Glory to the King of Kings. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise be exalted O lord my god hosanna in the highest hosanna in the highest hosanna in the highest amen Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and new earth, and the former shall not be remembered to, or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing, and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her nor the voice of crying. No more shall an infant from their life live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die one hundred years old, but the sinner being one hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit it. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of the tree, so shall the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Here ends. Our reading, first reading for today, praise to him, O Christ. Let us pray. As we remember the story of God's gracious presence with us through life and death, we lift our prayers on behalf of all creation. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we come to you on this blessed Easter morning knowing that the tomb is empty. We are filled with new hope from your Son's resurrection. We are given new salvation under his rule. Help us, O Lord, as we continue forth in this world that we 
might see you for who you are, knowing your greatness, your mercy, and your love Bring joy to our hearts once more and heal this land that is broken. Heal the broken hearts, the broken minds, the broken souls. And God of salvation, your wisdom and compassion guide us in the midst of pain and grief, in the midst of temptation and of fear. Through your resurrection power, heal our sorrow and uplift us in delight that we may know that fulfillment of your promise in our restoration to wholeness. Amen. And amen. Our next hymn for worship is an Easter Alleluia. crown of thorns placed on his head he knew that he would soon be dead he said did you forget me father did you they nailed him to a wooden cross soon all the world would feel the loss of Christ the King before his Alleluia. 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 He hung his head prepared to die lifted his face up to the sky said I am coming home now father to you the reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips he drank his last and gave his soul to glory Christ our Savior. He took with fear upon his sword, then turned to face his Christ and Lord, fell to his knees and crying, Hallelujah! 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 him in a linen gown and laid him down to rest inside the tomb the holes in his hands his feet now in our hearts we know he died to save us all from ourselves oh hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Three days went by, again they came to move the stone, to bless the slain. 
With oil and spice anointing, alleluia. But as they went to move the stone, they saw that they, he were not alone. And but Jesus Christ had risen, alleluia. Alleluia. turn back into our blue hymnal, the 654, the new birth. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he could not enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it is, comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Our second reading for today, there's two options we can choose. I'm going to choose to read from the book of Corinthians. The first option is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 19 through 26, or the book of Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. As I said, we're going to read from 1 Corinthians now, chapter 15. We're going to pick up at, at verse 19, and we're going to go through 26. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all, of all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one is in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God, the Father, when he puts an end to a rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be 
destroyed is death. Here ends our second reading for today. Praise to you, O Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God of resurrection power, you offer us life that overcomes death, light that overcomes darkness, hope that overcomes our deepest despair. What response could we offer? Our tithes and gifts? Yes but our minds, hearts, bodies, and witness as well. May our minds be about understanding who you are and who you long for us to be in this world. May our hearts overflow with your love and compassion for the poor, the oppressed, and the forgotten. May our bodies carry us out of the tombs of isolation to engage our neighbors as sisters and brothers. And may our witness be the alleluias we take with us to bring hope to everyone we meet in the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you feel so compelled and the Spirit compels you to do so, at this time, feel free to click on our link to our page and click on our tithe buttons if you feel compelled to do so. If you are, are at all having any trouble, feel free to message us and reach out. There are two options for our gospel reading for this morning. The first comes from the book of John. The second comes from the gospel of Luke, chapter 24, 1 through 12. However, we are going to keep in stride in the gospel of John for our service this morning. And it's chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, of which we are going to be reading. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and the two other disciples whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he stooped down and looking in saw the linen cloth lying there and he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen cloths lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also and saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. 
But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be a, the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, Teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Here ends our gospel reading for this morning. And this brings me to my message for today, entitled The Promise. We always hear about the promise of Easter. But I want to challenge us a little bit today. I want to look at you, brothers and sisters, and I want to ask first and foremost, when in your life have you made a promise? I'm sure all of us at some point have made promises to somebody in our lives. What kind of promise was it? For those of us who are parents, for many of us at, with our children, we make the promise that we will love them unconditionally. We will be there for them when they need us. We will ultimately love, cherish, and support them. What about marriage? It's another promise, a promise to love, a promise to cherish each other forever. And sometimes in this world nowadays, I feel like the promise of marriage is something that is more like a, well, we're going to, you know, do this commitment for right now, but we'll see how it goes instead of the promise that it is intended to be, which is that promise, that commitment to love cherish and honor each other through sickness, through health, through good times, through bad times, through the ups and downs that life brings to us. And yet, in today's scripture, we see the promise of Christ being born again, Christ living again. Being fulfilled, almost. We see, as we start off this morning, Mary Magdalene witnessing the tomb being empty and in her startle, in her shock, in her surprise she ultimately ends up running back to tell Peter to tell the other disciple on whom Christ Jesus loved that the tomb is empty the stone has been moved and the body is not there they've taken our Lord and I don't know where they have laid him and in this moment and in this whole passage up until she realizes that 
the man at the end that she's talking to is Christ Jesus, Mary is weeping. She is so focused and so concerned as to where have they laid my Lord? Where is his body? That she's ultimately forgetting or not yet realizing the scripture that he must rise to the Father. He must ascend to the Father to live again, to rule again. We see Peter and the other disciple running to the tomb. Now, if you can imagine being in a full-out panic sprint to run to the tomb, to find out that it's empty. That ultimately, there's nothing there but the garments in which we buried Jesus in. Now, for many of us, when we think of the promise of marriage, if we were told that the house was empty and the person was gone and we, we would fly home, right? Could you imagine someone like coming to us at work and saying, hey, your significant other just packed their stuff and left. And for many of us, truly being in love, we would drive through as fast as we could or we would run depending on our situation to our house to see. And just like Mary and just like Simon Peter, we would be upset. We would be weeping. We would be almost like, where are they? And this is exactly what's going on in the scripture story today. Their love for their Lord, for Jesus, was so strong. That witnessing this, they just didn't understand. And it's interesting that the first to witness this is a woman because in Jewish culture, you had to have a number of people witness something for it to be upheld, but typically it's the male witnessing it. And really, I believe that's why Mary went and got Simon Peter and the other disciple to witness this, so that there was two witnesses of the male To see that the grave, the tomb, had been empty. But yet, we continue forth and we see Simon Peter and the other disciple leave. But not Mary. Mary stayed. Mary stayed and she sat there and she kept weeping by the tomb. And ultimately she wept and kept looking in. And then she saw two angels one at the head and one at the feet of where Jesus' body laid. And they spoke to her and said, Why are you weeping? And she told them that she was looking for her Lord. But interestingly enough, at the time when she had replied that to the angels, Jesus appeared to Mary and asked her the same question. And initially, and I think this is a key point here, initially Mary does not recognize Jesus. She assumes he's the caretaker, the gardener, whatever it might be. But initially here, Mary does not recognize Jesus when he asks her, It's only when he calls her by name that her eyes are opened that it is Jesus, her Lord, before her. And Jesus says, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. So Christ 
has not fully come again, but he is ascending up to the Father. He has been laid to rest, and two days after, he shows himself to Mary as he is ascending upward to the Father. And as we see this, we can also relate this to nature. You see, for anyone who gardens, anyone who plants flowers, bulbs, seeds, you have to sow those seeds, right? You have to put them in a dark place until ultimately the light shines on them and they grow immensely. And ultimately, Jesus' body was laid in a dark, sealed tomb. Up until it wasn't sealed. Up until the light shined in and Christ was ascending upward to the Father. Just as your plant grows out of the darkness of the soil, reaching for the sunlight, it ascends upward. Christ ascended from the tomb upward. But we see here the Bible giving us that account of Jesus' death. We see it teaching us that two days after his death, he appeared to Mary to tell her that he was going to heaven. He was ascending to the Father, his Father, and our Father. He was ascending to God, his God, and our God. This, brothers and sisters, is that beginning of that new promise of Easter. This is that promise of everlasting life. And it's offered to each one of us. How exciting, how hopeful is that? as an event that we sit here this morning celebrating Christ coming to life again and ascending to the Father, ascending to God and bringing us the promise. Christ did not ever forsake us Christ did not ever turn his back on us and not fulfill his promise to us. A promise that had been prophesied years earlier. And just like Christ has not given up on us and he fulfilled his promise, may we too in our lives and through the promises we give to our fellow brothers and sisters, may we truly not falter. May we not give up. And may we truly honor the promises and the commitments that we've made to one another in this life and in the next through the everlasting life that Christ promised us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you on this blessed, blessed Easter morning, we look to you, O Lord, thankful for everything you have given us, thankful for this day, thankful for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of the promise. We are thankful for his ascending to you, our, your, his Father and ours. Almighty God, you are his God and ours. Help us to always remember that and help us as we live in the flesh currently. But help us to also live in the spirit in our day to days as we honor the promises just as Christ honored the promise to us. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
our closing hymn for this morning. Is Christ is risen? Alleluia. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen, our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Gratefully our hearts adore him as his light once more appears. Bowing down in joy before him, rising up from griefs and tears. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, all the sadness of our Lenten fast is o'er. Through the open gates of gladness, He returns to life once more. Death and hell before Him bending, see Him rise the victor now. Angels on his steps attending, glory round his wounded brow. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen all victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, all the sorrow that last evening round him lay, now hath found a glorious morrow in the rising of the day. See the grave its first fruits giving, springing up from holy ground. Christ was dead, but now is living. He was lost, but he is found. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen all victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, henceforth never, death or hell shall us enthrall. We are Christ in him forever, we have triumphed over all. All the doubting and dejection of our trembling hearts have ceased. Hail the day of resurrection, let us rise and keep the feast. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Amen. And amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Ever faithful God, by divine wisdom you gather us out of the darkness that has spoken its worst in the death of our Savior, into the light of Christ. Enable us to recall your many acts of mercy, 
the miracles by which you deliver us, and the signs of your unwaving love for humankind, which proclaim the gospel of resurrection and of life. Amen. Please join me in doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen and Amen. And as you, before we Depart as you go about your days, as you go about the rest of your Easter day, hopefully with loved ones. Maybe there's an Easter egg hunt, maybe there's a dinner. Maybe ultimately you think you're alone, but I promise you you're not. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. For he has risen for each one of us to be saved into eternal life. Let us need not forget that as we go about our rest of our day. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Go in peace. Amen and amen.